David Blaine has been accused of rape. David said to me, you want to see a magic trick? And I said yes. And next thing I knew, it was the next morning and I was in his apartment. And what happened in that particular situation? Why did things go sideways? She was just, you know, she engaged, <laughs> right? She said, where? David Blaine has kept quiet about these allegations. But today, we will go over the sexual assault allegations on Natasha Prince, a girl David Blaine had an affair with in his London apartment. And I did it to her and she went crazy. How is she affected how you live your life today? I mean, I think part of it, she was so brave. I... David Blaine, born David Blaine White on April 4th, 1973, in Brooklyn, New York, emerged as a transformative figure in the world of magic and endurance stunts. His early life, marked by a blend of curiosity and adversity, set the stage for his later career as a world-renowned magician and illusionist. David was born to Patrice Maureen White, a schoolteacher, and William Perez, a Vietnam War veteran of Puerto Rican and Italian descent. His parents' diverse backgrounds played a significant role in shaping his identity and outlook on life. Patrice, of Russian-Jewish descent, raised David in a single-parent household after her separation from William. Growing up in Brooklyn's multifaceted environment, David was exposed to various cultural influences that enriched his perspective. David's fascination with magic began at the tender age of four when he witnessed a street magician perform tricks on the subway. This encounter sparked a lifelong passion. I remember being captivated by the mystery and wonder of it all, Blaine recalled in an interview. It was like discovering a hidden world where the impossible became possible. His mother, Patrice, was highly supportive of his burgeoning interest. She bought him his first magic kit, which became the cornerstone of his early practice. Blaine spent countless hours perfecting card tricks and sleight of hand, often performing for his mother and friends. His dedication to the craft was evident even at this young age. David had this intense focus and drive, Patrice once said. He was always practicing, always trying to get better. David's school years were not without challenges. He attended several schools in the Brooklyn area, where he often felt like an outsider. His mixed race heritage and unconventional interests sometimes made him a target for bullying. Despite these obstacles, Blaine's determination never wavered. He found solace in magic, which served as both a passion and an escape. Magic was my refuge, Blaine has said. Whenever things got tough, I could retreat into this world where I had control, where I could create wonder and astonishment. His ability to channel adversity into his craft became a defining characteristic of his later career. During his teenage years, Blaine became deeply influenced by street performers in New York City. He spent hours observing their techniques and learning from their improvisational skills. Street magic, with its raw and unfiltered connection to the audience, fascinated him. It was here that he honed his ability to engage and captivate people in impromptu settings. Street magic is the purest form of the art, Blaine once remarked. It's just you and the audience. No stage, no props, just the magic and the reaction it evokes. David's passion for magic led him to seek mentorship from seasoned magicians. He learned from several local magicians who recognized his talent and potential. These mentors helped him refine his skills and introduced him to the broader magic community. They also taught him the importance of showmanship and the psychological aspects of magic. Magic is not just about the tricks, Blaine learned. It's about creating an experience, a moment of wonder that stays with people. This philosophy became a cornerstone of his performances. By his late teens, Blaine was performing regularly at parties and small events. His reputation grew as a talented and innovative magician. His early performances were characterized by a minimalist approach, focusing on simple yet astonishing tricks. This style, which he later popularized on television, set him apart from other magicians who relied heavily on elaborate props and setups. Patrice's influence on David's early life cannot be overstated. She was not only his first audience, but also his biggest supporter. Tragically, Patrice was diagnosed with cancer when David was a teenager. Her illness and eventual passing in 1994 had a profound impact on him. My mother's death was the most devastating moment of my life, Blaine has said, but it also became a source of strength and inspiration. Patrice's memory fueled Blaine's drive to succeed and honor her belief in his potential. He often speaks of her in interviews, crediting her unwavering support as a key factor in his success. David Blaine's career took a significant turn in 1997 
with the release of his first television special, David Blaine Street Magic. This special introduced a new style of magic to the world, focusing on close-up illusions performed on the streets, directly interacting with the public. The reactions of the spectators were as much a part of the show as the tricks themselves. I wanted to bring magic back to the streets, Blaine explained to show that it's not just about big stage illusions, but about creating real moments of wonder. Street magic was a massive success and set the tone for Blaine's future endeavors. The minimalist style, combined with Blaine's enigmatic personality, captivated audiences and distinguished him from traditional magicians. This approach not only showcased his technical skills, but also his ability to connect with people on a personal level. Blaine's career evolved as he began to focus on endurance stunts, challenging the limits of human performance and capturing the public's imagination. His first major stunt, Buried Alive, took place in 1999. Blaine was entombed in a transparent coffin beneath a three-ton water-filled tank for seven days with no food. This feat drew considerable media attention and thousands of spectators. Reflecting on the experience, Blaine said, it was about testing my own limits and seeing how far I could push myself both mentally and physically. In 2000, Blaine performed Frozen in Time, where he was encased in a block of ice for 63 hours in Times Square. This stunt was broadcast live and millions tuned in to witness his struggle against the freezing conditions. Blaine emerged from the ice with severe frostbite, but stated, it was one of the most intense experiences of my life. The mental focus required was beyond anything I had ever done. Continuing his theme of endurance, Blaine's vertigo stunt in 2002 saw him standing atop a 100-foot pillar in New York City for 35 hours without a safety net. The risk and physical toll of the stunt were enormous, but Blaine's resolve impressed spectators worldwide. He described the experience as a battle against fear and fatigue. In 2003, Blaine took on one of his most controversial and talked about stunts, Above the Below. He was suspended in a transparent plexiglass box by the River Thames in London for 44 days with only water to sustain him. The public's reaction ranged from awe to skepticism, with some questioning the authenticity of the stunt. However, Blaine remained committed, saying, it was about endurance and resilience, proving to myself and others that the human spirit can overcome tremendous adversity. Blaine's stunts continued to grow in scale and ambition. In 2006, he performed Drowned Alive, where he submerged himself in a water-filled sphere for seven days and nights. The culmination of the stunt was an attempt to break the world record for holding one's breath underwater. Though he fell short of the record, Blaine's effort was widely praised. It was incredibly challenging, both physically and mentally, he said, but it was about pushing boundaries and seeing what was possible. In 2008, Blaine attempted the dive of death, where he was hoisted high into the air and planned to fall safely to the ground. Despite technical difficulties, the stunt demonstrated his willingness to take risks and innovate within his craft. In 2012, Blaine undertook electrified one million volts always on, where he stood on a platform surrounded by Tesla coils emitting electric currents for 72 hours. The event was streamed live, allowing viewers to interact with Blaine through social media. This was about connecting with people in a new way and exploring the relationship between technology and magic, Blaine explained. In addition to his endurance stunts, Blaine has continued to innovate within traditional magic. His 2013 television special, David Blaine, Real or Magic, featured close-up magic performed for celebrities and public figures, showcasing his ability to astonish even the most skeptical audiences. The reactions from stars like Kanye West, Harrison Ford and Brian Cranston highlighted Blaine's skill and the universal appeal of his magic. Magic is about creating moments of wonder and disbelief, Blaine stated. Seeing those reactions is the ultimate reward. Blaine's 2016 special, David Blaine, Beyond Magic, took his performances to new heights, featuring death-defying tricks and personal stories that added depth to his acts. The special included a particularly memorable moment where he caught a bullet in a metal cup held in his mouth, a stunt that left audiences worldwide in awe. In recent years, Blaine has continued to push the boundaries of magic and endurance. In 2020, he performed Ascension, where he floated into the sky holding a cluster of helium balloons reminiscent of the movie Up. The stunt, streamed live on YouTube, captivated millions and demonstrated Blaine's ability to merge technology, spectacle 
and human endurance. It was about capturing the feeling of awe and wonder, Blaine said. To remind people that magic can still be found in the world, Throughout his career, David Blaine has remained dedicated to his craft, constantly evolving and exploring new ways to captivate and inspire. His influence on modern magic is profound, blending traditional illusions with groundbreaking stunts that challenge the very limits of human potential. My goal has always been to push the boundaries of what's possible, Blaine has said, to show that magic is not just about tricks, but about the incredible power of the human spirit. David Blaine has not been immune to controversy among the more serious allegations that have surfaced against him are those related to sexual assault. These accusations have cast a shadow over his public persona and raised significant concerns about his conduct off the stage. Delving into these allegations reveals a darker side to the magician, one that he would likely prefer remained out of the spotlight. The first major allegation against Blaine came to public attention in October 2017, during the height of the Fash Me Too movement, which saw numerous women women coming forward with stories of sexual misconduct by powerful men in various industries. Natasha Prince, a former model, accused Blaine of raping her in 2004 at a house in Chelsea, West London. According to Prince, she met Blaine at a nightclub where he invited her to his friend's home. There, she claims, he offered her a drink, after which she began to feel disoriented. Prince alleges that Blaine then raped her while she was in a semi-conscious state. Prince's account was detailed and harrowing. She reported the incident to the police in 2016, over a decade after it allegedly occurred. Explaining the delay, Prince said, I didn't know how to process what had happened. I was embarrassed, ashamed, and didn't think anyone would believe me. Her decision to come forward was partly influenced by the broader societal shift encouraging victims to speak out against their abusers. Blaine vehemently denied the allegations. His attorney, Marty Singer, issued a statement asserting Blaine's innocence. David vehemently denies that he raped or sexually assaulted any woman ever, and he specifically denies raping Natasha Prince. The Metropolitan Police in London conducted an investigation into the claim, which involved interviewing both Prince and Blaine. Despite the serious nature of the accusation, no charges were filed due to insufficient evidence. The investigation was closed, but the stain on Blaine's reputation remained. In 2019, Blaine faced additional accusations from two women who claimed he had sexually assaulted them in the 1990s. One woman, identified only as a former model, alleged that Blaine sexually assaulted her at a private home in Manhattan in 1998. The other woman, also remaining anonymous, claimed that Blaine assaulted her in 1997 at a New York apartment. Both women provided detailed accounts to the police, and their cases were part of an ongoing investigation by the New York Police Department, NYPD. The public reaction to these allegations was mixed, while some fans continued to support Blaine, arguing that the magician should be presumed innocent until proven guilty, others expressed their disappointment and outrage. The allegations spark discussions about the behavior of celebrities and the power dynamics that often allow such misconduct to go unchecked. Blaine's response to the allegations has been consistent, a firm denial and a legal strategy aimed at discrediting his accusers. His legal team has emphasized the lack of evidence and the considerable time gap between the alleged incidents and the reports. Blaine himself has remained relatively silent on the matter, choosing not to make public statements beyond the denials issued through his attorney. However, the magician's silence has been interpreted in various ways. Some see it as a sign of guilt, while others believe it reflects a strategy to avoid further public scrutiny and legal complications. Blaine's public appearances and performances have continued, but the allegations have undoubtedly impacted his image. The allegations against Blaine must be understood within the broader context of the Nubra Me Too movement and the increased willingness of survivors to come forward. This movement has shed light on the pervasive nature of sexual misconduct across industries and highlighted the challenges that survivors face in seeking justice. In Blaine's case, the allegations have raised questions about the culture within the entertainment industry, where powerful individuals often operate with impunity. The reluctance of survivors to report such incidents promptly is often due to fear of retaliation, disbelief, and the potential impact on their careers. Blaine's accusers have articulated these concerns, emphasizing the need for a supportive environment where victims can safely share their experiences. The impact of these allegations on Blaine's career has been significant, although not career-ending. While he continues to perform and maintain a fan base, the accusations have tainted his legacy. 
they serve as a reminder that even those who seem untouchable in their professional achievements can face serious personal and ethical failings. In the entertainment industry, where public perception is crucial, allegations of sexual misconduct can have lasting repercussions. Blaine's reputation as a magician who pushes the limits of human endurance and creativity is now intertwined with the darker narrative of these accusations. This duality complicates his legacy and serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of accountability and respect. David Blaine's professional achievements are undeniable, but the allegations of sexual assault have cast a long shadow over his career. The detailed accounts provided by his accusers paint a troubling picture of behaviour that stands in stark contrast to his public persona. While Blaine has denied these allegations, the broader implications for his reputation and legacy are profound. These allegations highlight the ongoing struggle for survivors of sexual misconduct to be heard and believed. They also underscore the need for systemic change within industries that have long shielded powerful individuals from accountability. As Blaine continues his career, the shadow of these allegations will likely persist, reminding the public that behind the magic and spectacle, there can exist a much darker reality.